Hello and welcome to this video brought to you by www.learningarabicwithangela.com 100% free Arabic learning resources for everyone. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Find me on Facebook, just search for Learning Arabic with Angela to get daily Arabic learning tips and resources in your Facebook feed. In this detailed tutorial, you will learn all about telling time in Arabic as well as numbers and parts of the day. First, let's review parts of the day in Arabic. As-sabah, morning. Qabl al-dhuhr is the period in Arabic before noon. Al-dhuhr, noon. Ba'd al-dhuhr, afternoon. Al-masa, evening. Al-layl, night. As-sabah, qabl al-dhuhr. الظهر بعد الظهر المساء الليل الظهر is noon and notice that we add قبل which means before hence قبل الظهر is before noon بعد is after hence بعد الظهر is after noon And now, can you please arrange the parts of the day from morning till evening, from A to D? The right order would be As-Sabah, C, Qabla al-Dhuhr, B, Al-Dhuhr, E, Ba'd al-Dhuhr, A, Al-Masa, D. Remember, al-dhuhr is noon, qabla is before, hence qabla al-dhuhr, before noon, ba'da is after, hence ba'da al-dhuhr is after noon. It's also important to note that in Arabic, we often refer to parts of the day as well in relevance to the five Islamic daily prayers. Al-Fajr, the prayer at dawn time. Al-Dhuhr, noon prayer. Al-Asr, the prayer in the late afternoon. Al-Maghrib, the prayer just after sunset. Al-Isha, the prayer at night time. Now that we've gone through parts of the day in Arabic, we're going to Discuss numbers in detail in Arabic, including grammar points. First, we're going to count from 1 to 10, and then we will explain how we count objects in Arabic and the grammar points. Wahid for 1, Ithnan for 2, Thalatha for 3, Arba is four, Khamsa is five, and Sufr is zero. Notice the shape of the fingers as you've got one finger and the shape corresponds to the straight line for one. Notice for two, you've got two fingers and notice the Arabic number has got like two teeth. And notice for three, You've got three teeth corresponding to three fingers. Notice the shape of the fingers for number four. And number five is like the palm of the hand. Sufr or number zero is basically a small dot. Sitta is six. Saba is seven. Thamania is eight, tis'a is nine, and ashara is ten. Notice for saba, the shape of the fingers, it looks like the peace sign, and if you're confused with 
7 and 8 in Arabic, try to remember that you need 2 plus 5 fingers and the shape of the fingers when you do the, the peace sign for 2 looks like Saba, number 7 in Arabic, but 8 is different, is inverted. Also notice that Tisa looks almost like the English 9, pretty much. And Ashara, of course, is 1, which is a straight line, plus the Arabic 0, which is basically a small dot. Sifrwa wahid. Now let's explain counting in Arabic. Typically, we don't use 1 and 2 the same way they're used in English. For example, ra'aytu. Mu'allima, I saw a teacher. We wouldn't say ra'aytu wahid or wahida, mu'allima. Also for two, ra'aytu ithnatayn mu'allimatayn, that would be wrong. We wouldn't normally use wahid wa ithnan for counting. We only use them as adjectives. So I can simply say ra'aytu mu'allima, which Naturally means I saw a teacher, hence one teacher. رأيت معلمتين. I saw two teachers, so it's naturally meaning two people because we use a suffix to form the dual in Arabic and we'll come to that later on. You can only use واحد واثنان as adjectives. For example, رأيت معلمة واحدة أو رأيت معلمتين اثنتين. And as you may know already, the adjectives always come after the noun in Arabic. For example, Baytun Kabir, it literally translates to a house big. So in Arabic, we start with the noun first and then the adjective. So if you're going to use numbers as adjectives for one and two, they're going to come after the noun and you cannot place them before the noun, that would be wrong. And now let's count some books. Kitab means a book and it also means one book. Remember, we don't say wahid kitab because kitab automatically means one book or a book. Unless you want to place wahid after the noun as an adjective, kitabun wahidun. Now to say two books, you have to add a suffix. And in Arabic, we have a specific way of referring to two things or two people. So we have to add the suffix an or ain. Alif noon or ya sukun noon. Hence, kitaban or kitabain. Now, what's the difference between the two sounds, an and ain? The difference is that kitaban is when the noun is in the nominative case, whereas kitabain, the noun would be in the accusative or genitive case. So, it's just a reflection of the grammatical state. And to count with the rest of the numbers, you would say Talathatu Kutubin, three books, and so on. Continuing counting with the rest, Arbaatu Kutubin, four books. Khamsatu Kutubin, five books. Sittatu Kutubin, six books. Sabatu Kutubin Tamaniatu Kutubin Tisatu Kutubin And finally Asharatu Kutubin And now you're probably wondering I know how to count from one to ten already and I know how to do the dual form. Now let's say we want to count three teachers. 
معلمة is a female teacher and معلم is a male teacher. Notice that we say ثلاث معلمات وثلاثة معلمين. Have you noticed the difference? ثلاث without تا مربوطة. However, for معلم which is a masculine noun, we say ثلاثة with تا مربوطة at the end. Numbers in Arabic from 3 to 10 have gender disagreement with the counted noun. So if muallima is a feminine noun in this case, we have to use thalathu without a ta al marbuta. However, for muallim, which is a masculine noun, we have to say thalathatu with a ta al marbuta. Let's look at more examples. Let's say, how old are you? Kam umruka, when we are asking a male, wa kam umruki, when we are asking a female. That is, what's your age? Sana is one year. Remember, we can't say wahida, sana. We say sana, aw sanatun wahida. As an adjective, wahda would be an adjective after the noun. Sanatan, that is two years. We've added the suffix alif noon in the dual. Three years would be thalathu sanawat. Thalathu and not thalathatu. Why? Because we have to look at sanawat, which is years in the plural. And think about the singular form, which is sana with ta marbuta or sanatun. Hence, because the noun is feminine, we have to use the masculine form of counting, thalathu, and not thalathatu. And similarly, we say arba'u sanawat khamsu. Sanawat, Situ Sanawat. Sabu Sanawat, Thamani Sanawat, Tisu Sanawat. Ashru Sanawat. So, so far we said from 3 to 10, we have gender disagreement between the number and the noun. So, if the noun is feminine, the number is going to be masculine. And if the noun is masculine, the number is going to be feminine. Ashru sanawat. Notice sanawat is in the plural, just as we count in English, 10 years. So, years is plural. However... From 11 to 100, the counted noun becomes singular in Arabic. For example, tis'ata ashara sana. That is 19 year instead of years, literally speaking. Ashruna sana. 20 year, literally speaking. Wa mi'atu sana. 100 year instead of years. So we do not say tis'ata ashara sanawat, we say tis'ata ashara sana, ashruna sana, mi'ata sana. Remember the counted noun becomes singular from 11 to 100 and also all hundreds and thousands such as 200, 300, 400, 500 etc. When the hundreds are not combined with other numbers like 101, 111, etc. So from 3 to 10, we have gender disagreement and the counted noun is plural. However, from 11 to 100, remember the counted noun becomes singular. Another example. We say عشر 
دقائق عشر دقائق ten minutes notice that دقيقة is one minute and it's a feminine noun with التاء المربوطة however we say عشر and not عشرة because دقيقة is a feminine noun hence the number will be masculine from 3 to 10 now look at 19, 20 and 100 just as the earlier example we say تسعة عشرة دقيقة that is a minute 19 minute literally and not دقائق and we say عشرون دقيقة and not عشرون دقائق عشرون دقيقة ومئة دقيقة remember from 11 to 100 the counted noun is going to be singular now let's practice what we've just learned about dual and about counting in Arabic let's say you're at the check-in counter at the airport and the lady here is asking you how many bags have you got or how many bags do you have كم حقيبة معك two points first of all notice the noun after كم which is حقيبة is a bag and not bags in English we would say how many bags in the plural but in Arabic the noun after كم is always singular كم حقيبة معك if you want to ask how many books have you got كم كتابا معك etc the second point is when you want to ask uh, what do you have or what have you got in Arabic we do not have a verb uh, to have but we substitute with things like um, adverbials and um, uh, things like prepositions so for example over here uh, معي that suggests something is with me مع means with hence معي with me that is on me now but if we use كم حقيبة عندك عند which uh, means at literally how many bags are at yours when I say عندي that would suggest that I might have it here and now with me or it could be at home or somewhere else so معك uh, that is with you that means with you right now or on you right now so this is the difference between عند و مع معي حقيبتان so if you want to say I've got two bags معي حقيبتان so we use the suffix alif noon in the dual and in this case because uh, the noun here is in the nominative case we use the alif noon and not the ya noon uh, now let's say you've got a uh, two boxes in the airport so معي صندوقان كم صندوقان معك معي صندوقان and be careful please uh, with the difference between صندوقان with تنوين الفتح and صندوقان with the alif because it's a long vowel so there's a difference in the pronunciation صندوقان صندوقان حقيبة حقيبتان let's say you're uh, at a restaurant and someone asks you how many people or persons have you got with you at the minute معي شخصان كم شخصا معك معي شخصان I've got two people with me كم كتابا معك how many books have you got معي كتابان كم كيسان معك how many like shopping bags have you got معي كيسان and now how many children have you got كم طفلا معك معي طفلان now moving on to the plural let's say you've got three of each items so حقيبة is a feminine noun and it ends with تا مربوطة التاء المربوطة so we're going to say معي ثلاث حقائب ثلاث ثلاث is a masculine uh, number without التاء المربوطة versus uh, 
حقيبة وإيش هاز تا مربوطة so we're gonna say ثلاث حقائب and not ثلاثة حقائب because remember numbers from three to ten have gender disagreement now for the rest كتاب is masculine شخص is masculine صندوق is masculine كيس is masculine and طفل is a masculine noun so we're gonna say معي ثلاثة كتب معي ثلاثة أشخاص معي ثلاثة صناديق معي ثلاثة أكياس معي ثلاثة أطفال So you can see the difference ثلاثة because the nouns are masculine hence the number will be feminine so gender disagreement with numbers from 3 to 10 And now in this part, we're going to learn how to count from 11 to 20. So we know how to count from 1 to 10. I'm going to give you a like an easy trick or tip to learn how to count from 11 to 19. So 11 is ahada ashara. Notice ashara. And then the rest have the same uh, word عشرة at the end so إثنى عشرة ثلاثة عشرة أربعة عشرة خمسة عشرة ستة عشرة سبعة عشرة ثمانية عشرة تسعة عشرة for 19 and of course 20 is عشرون عشرون notice that uh, all these numbers have عشرة عشرة so from 11 to 19 you've got عشرة at the end and uh, they're all pretty much the same so 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9 they're the same as you've learned to count earlier apart from uh, 11 we don't say واحد we say أحد أحد عشرة we don't say إثنان عشرة we, we say إثنى عشرة so أحد عشرة and إثنى عشرة are the main differences and now test your knowledge by letting me know what's in the missing boxes find the missing numbers so we've got ahada ashara ifna ashara what's number 13 and then arbaata ashara what's number 15 and then we've got sittata ashara What's number 17? And then 18 followed by 19. So what's number 19? So 13 would be 13. 15, 15. And 17 is 17. And finally 19, 19. Ashara, well done. And now we're going to count, but with ordinal numbers. That is first, second, third, etc. So we know wahid is one. Al awal is the first. Just as in English, we say one and the first. We cannot say uh, al wahid. In Arabic so hence we say al awwal it's different ithnan number two becomes athani the second thalatha athalith arba'a arrabi' khamsa al khamis sitta al sadis sab'a al sabi' thamaniya al thamin tis'a al tasa' ashara العاشر. For example, the third lesson, الدرس الثالث. ثلاثة is number three, and the third lesson would be الدرس الثالث. Can you list the lessons from first to tenth by yourself? Give it a try. الدرس الأول, الدرس الثاني, الدرس الثالث, الدرس الرابع. الدرس الخامس الدرس السادس الدرس السابع 
الدرس الثامن الدرس التاسع الدرس العاشر Now to change these ordinal numbers to the feminine الأول becomes الأولى الأولى For example the first session الحصة الأولى الثاني and the rest we add التاء المربوطة the round تاء to become الثانية الثالثة الرابعة الخامسة السادسة السابعة الثامنة التاسعة والعاشرة For example here we're speaking about the winners الفائز الأول الفائزة الأولى الفائز الثاني الفائزة الثانية الفائز الثالث الفائزة الثالثة And now can you list the winners from one to three in masculine and feminine? Let's try together. الأول الأولى الثاني الثانية الثالث الثالثة Well done And now we've learned the ordinal numbers we're going to use those numbers to tell the time to ask what time is it كم الساعة كم الساعة However for uh, one o'clock, we don't say a sa'a al ula. We're gonna use a sa'a al wahida. So this is an important note. So a sa'a is a feminine noun and it ends with a ta al marbuta. Hence, we're gonna use the feminine ordinal numbers, but we're not gonna use al ula. So the only difference, we're going to use all of the rest, الثانية, الثالثة, الرابعة, for all the rest of the hours. But for one o'clock, remember, we're going to say الواحدة. For example, الساعة الواحدة, it's one o'clock. الساعة الثانية, it's two o'clock. الساعة الثالثة, it's three o'clock, and so on. So just for one o'clock, it's الساعة الواحدة. This is the major difference. كم الساعة؟ الساعة الواحدة. كم الساعة؟ الساعة الواحدة. تماما. تماما means something like exactly or one o'clock sharp. Now for eleven and twelve o'clock. الساعة الحادية عشرة الساعة الثانية عشرة الساعة الحادية عشرة الساعة الثانية عشرة سؤال وجواب And now we're going to use what we've learned so far to speak about our daily routine. So to ask someone, when do they wake up? If you're addressing a male, متى تستيقظوا? If you're addressing a female, متى تستيقظين? تستيقظوا, that is, أنت تستيقظوا. You wake up for the male. تستيقظين, you wake up for the female. Anti tastaqidin. Notice the difference is that we add the ya noon for the second person feminine. If it's too difficult to pronounce, try to section it according to like vowel sukun. Tas tay ki du. Tas tay ki du. Mata tastaqidu. For the feminine, mata tastaqidin. To ask what time do you go to work or when do you go to work, we're going to use meta again as a question tool that means when. 
متى تذهب إلى العمل؟ When do you go to work? إلى to إلى العمل to work to ask a female متى تذهبين إلى العمل to ask someone what time do they sleep or when do they sleep متى تنام when do you sleep متى تنامين if you're addressing a female and notice the difference تستيقظ تستيقظين تذهب تذهبين تنام تنامين The reply can be something like أستيقظ مبكرا I wake up early أستيقظ مبكرا Or you can say I wake up late أستيقظ متأخرا أستيقظ متأخرا You can also provide a time أستيقظ الساعة السادسة That is at six o'clock أو أستيقظ الساعة التاسعة That is at nine o'clock So, so far we know that مبكرا is early and متأخرا is late مبكرا versus متأخرا And we also know how to provide a time أستيقظ الساعة السادسة at six o'clock and you can also say في الساعة that is in the hour of literally speaking so they're both the same exactly أستيقظ الساعة السادسة أو أستيقظ في الساعة السادسة they're both the same it's just a different way of expressing yourself and you can also say صباحا or في الصباح that is morning time and in the morning أو مساء in the evening or evening time and في المساء same thing ظهرا that is at noon time and في الظهر and then you can also say before noon قبل الظهر أو بعد الظهر afternoon so either before noon or afternoon قبل الظهر أو بعد الظهر In this part, we're going to learn how to speak about the future because it's also part of using time in Arabic and speaking about time. So, to speak about the future tense in Arabic, we use um, particles and prefixes. So, we either use particle sawfa, which is a word on its own, or sa, the letter sin, which is a prefix that will attach to the present tense verb. So either you say sofa or sa plus the verb in the present tense. In this uh, lesson, we're going to stick to sa. For a video, separate video about the future tense, you can refer to my uh, video about the future and you'll find it in the grammar playlist. Now to ask someone, what will you do in your day off? ماذا ستفعل يوم العطلة if you're addressing a male تفعل is you do for the second person masculine we're going to add س ماذا ستفعل ستفعل if you're addressing a female ماذا ستفعلين س plus تفعلين عطلة is basically a day off or a holiday or vacation now the reply will also be in the future. I will do something. For example, س سأكنس الأرض. I will sweep the floor or I will vacuum clean the floor. سأكنس الأرض. سأغسل الملابس. I will wash the clothes. سأغسل الملابس. I will iron the clothes. سأكوي الملابس. So أكوي we add س as a prefix. سأكوي الملابس. I will read a book. سأقرأ كتابا. I will watch television. سأشاهد التلفاز. I will wash the dishes. سأغسل الأطباق. سأقرأ كتابا. سأشاهد التلفاز. سأغسل الأطباق. 
So when I'm speaking about myself, أنا, the verb will always start with a. أنا سأكنس الأرض, سأغسل الملابس, سأكوي, سأقرأ, etc. Sometimes it starts with u. أشاهد التلفاز, I watch television. سأشاهد التلفاز, I will watch television. Why does it start with u? With like dhamma, why does the alif have dhamma? Because it comes from a four letter uh, base verb that is shahada, which comes from four letters instead of three letters. So this is the only time when you would say u. For example, sharaka, uh, verb to participate, I will participate. Sa'ushariku. We don't say ashariku, ushariku. Sa'ushariku, I will participate. In this part of the video, you're going to have a reading text followed by some questions. So look and listen carefully. Undur wastamir. The conversation is between Qasim wa Ghassan. Aina tadhhabu ya Ghassan? Adhhabu ila al-madrasa. Al-waqtu mubakkir. As-sa'atu al-ana as-sadisatu sabaha. Al-madrasatu ba'idatun an al-bayt. متى يبدأ اليوم الدراسي؟ يبدأ الساعة السابعة صباحا. هل تذهب بالحافلة؟ لا، أذهب بالسيارة. متى ينتهي اليوم الدراسي؟ ينتهي الساعة الواحدة ظهرا. كم حصة تدرس في اليوم؟ أدرس ستة حصص في اليوم. ماذا تفعل في الاستراحة؟ أذهب إلى المكتبة أو إلى المختبر. And I will briefly explain what happened in the conversation. So, Aina tadhhabu ya Ghassan? Where do you go, Ghassan? Aina is a question tool to ask about a place, that is, where. Aina tadhhabu ya Ghassan? Ya is a vocative particle that we use when we're calling someone in Arabic. Adhhabu ila? I go to. Ila al madrasa? I go to school. We have to use the right preposition here. Adhhabu ila al amal? Mathalan, I go to work, for example. Adhhabu ila al sharika? I go to the uh, company. أذهب إلى المكتب. I go to the office. So أذهب إلى. I go to. الوقت مبكر. So the timing or the time right now is early. This is versus late. متأخر. مبكر ومتأخر. Opposites. الساعة الآن. So the time now. الآن means now. السادسة. That is six. صباحا. Sabahan means morning time or in the morning. So it's 6 o'clock in the morning. Al-madrasatu ba'idatun an al-bayt. The school is far away from the house. Ba'ida means far. Al-madrasatu ba'idatun. Notice that al-madrasa is a feminine noun ending with atta al-marbuta. Hence the adjective ba'ida, which means far, also ends with Atta al marbuta and it's also feminine. If you want to say um, the mosque is far away from the house, we would have said al masjidu baidun an al bayt. So masculine noun, masculine adjective, feminine noun, feminine adjective. Baidatun uh, an is opposite of qaribatun min, that is close to. So we can say al madrasatu baidatun an al bayt. The school is far away from the house, or we can say it's close to the house. Al madrasa tu qaribatun min al bayt. If you're a bit confused between baidatun an wa qaribatun min, because it's important to remember these prepositions. Remember baida 
وعن both have عين ثلاثة عين as opposed to قريبة من so بعيدة عن قريبة من أو if we have a masculine noun بعيد عن وقريب من متى يبدأ when does it start متى يبدأ اليوم الدراسي the school day يبدأ it starts or literally saying he starts because we don't have uh, the pronoun it in Arabic everything is either either masculine or feminine so يبدأ that is هو يبدأ because اليوم is a masculine noun يبدأ الساعة السابعة صباحا so it starts at 7 o'clock in the morning in the second part so هل تذهب بالحافلة do you go by bus بالحافلة by bus so we have to use the letter B and remember by for B لا أذهب بالسيارة so I go by car بالسيارة متى ينتهي اليوم الدراسي so when does it end متى ينتهي اليوم الدراسي the school day ينتهي الساعة الواحدة ظهرا so it ends at one at noon noon time ظهرا or we can say في الظهر كم حصة تدرس في اليوم how many sessions do you study in a day حصة is a single lesson or session and notice after كم we use a singular noun we say حصة and we don't say حصص Remember that from the point that we mentioned earlier. أدرسو, I study ستة حصص في اليوم. So I study six sessions in a day. Notice حصة is a, a feminine noun with a ta' al-marbuta. However, when we're counting, remember from three to ten, we've got gender uh, disagreement. So we don't say ستة حصص, we say ستة. We're going to use a masculine number. ستة حصص في اليوم. ماذا تفعل في الاستراحة؟ استراحة means a break or break time. أذهب إلى المكتبة. I go to the library. أو إلى المختبر. Or to the lab. المختبر. So we can basically use the same format to ask about work. When does your work or duty start? متى يبدأ الدوام؟ دوام is basically the work shift or duty. متى يبدأ؟ يبدأ الساعة and then you can say the time. For example, يبدأ الساعة السابعة صباحا at 7 morning time. متى ينتهي الدوام? When does your shift or work duty end? ينتهي الساعة For example, الواحدة ظهرا at one noon time. Or you can say عصرا, that is in the late afternoon. For example, ينتهي الساعة الرابعة عصرا. So at four o'clock, like uh, in the late afternoon or pretty much evening time. So we say عصرا for that late afternoon time in Arabic. And you can also say مساء in the evening or evening time. ينتهي الساعة السابعة مساء evening time. أو في المساء we said it's the same thing. So we can say صباحا أو في الصباح ظهرا أو في الظهر عصرا أو في العصر أو مساء أو في المساء. Listening practice. Listen to the questions and choose A or B. واحد أين تذهب؟ أذهب إلى الجامعة. A or B. And the answer is A. الجامعة University. اثنان متى يبدأ اليوم الدراسي؟ يبدأ الساعة الثامنة A أو B and the answer is B 
الساعة الثامنة ثلاثة متى ينتهي اليوم الدراسي؟ ينتهي في الثالثة عصرا A O B and the answer is A الثالثة عصرا أربعة كم حصة تدرس في اليوم؟ أدرس خمسة حصص في اليوم And the answer is B خمسة خمسة حصص And now we're going to speak about our daily routine. Routine اليومي. My daily routine. Just as in English, routine means um, the same thing. So, routine my routine. اليومي. Daily. Coming from يوم, which is day. You can make sentences such as, you can start with, uh, the time of the day في الصباح in the morning قبل الظهر before noon بعد الظهر afternoon في المساء in the evening and remember we said you can say صباحا and you can say مساء if you want to say um, at noon time exactly في الظهر أو ظهرا في الظهر أو ظهرا and then you can start saying what you do. في الصباح أذهب إلى الحديقة مثلا. For example, I go to the park. أذهب إلى الحديقة. Or you can say أذهب إلى المقهى. I go to the coffee shop. أذهب إلى المركز التجاري. I go to the shopping center. أذهب إلى المركز التجاري. أذهب إلى المطعم The restaurant أذهب إلى المطعم أذهب إلى المكتبة I go to the library أذهب إلى المدرسة I go to the school And you can continue to add your sentence by explaining how you go to that place Is it by train, by car or by bus? You can say بالقطار By train you have to add B because it means by. Remember, B is for by. Bil uh, hafila by bus. Bil sayyara by car. Bil qitar by train. Bil hafila by bus. Bil sayyara by car. You can also say usalli, I pray. Unazif, I clean. For example, قبل الظهر أنظف البيت. Before noon, I clean the house. في المساء, in the evening, في المساء أقرأ كتابا. I read a book. Or you can say, في المساء أقرأ جريدة. I read a newspaper. You can also say, uh, بعد الظهر, in the afternoon, أدرس اللغة العربية. I study Arabic language. بعد الظهر أدرس اللغة العربية. You can also say if you wake up uh, early or late. For example, أستيقظ مبكرا وأنام متأخرا. I wake up early and I sleep late. In addition to what we've just mentioned, you can also specify what time you do that action. For example, أستيقظ مبكرا الساعة الخامسة. I wake up early at five o'clock. Or you can say في الساعة الخامسة. Both are the same. So أستيقظ مبكرا الساعة الخامسة أو أستيقظ مبكرا في الساعة الخامسة. You can also say when you eat or have breakfast, lunch or dinner. آكل I eat أتناول I have آكل الفطور أو أتناول الفطور 
الساعة السادسة at six o'clock أتناول العشاء الساعة السابعة for example at seven o'clock أتناول العشاء الساعة السابعة More action verbs أغسل الملابس I wash the clothes أشاهد التلفاز I watch television أكوي الملابس I iron the clothes أغسل الأطباق I wash the dishes and you can add a certain timing to it. And now we're going to learn how to count by tens. عشرة is ten. عشرة. Twenty is عشرون. عشرون. Now for the rest, like thirty, forty, and to ninety, what happens is, for example, ثلاثة, which has a ta'al marbuta at the end, we're going to omit that, and we're going to add waw noon. So it's going to become ثلاثون. So ثلاثة, you remove the ta'al marbuta, and you add waw noon, the oon, and you'll get ثلاثون. So this is the trick. أربعة plus waw noon, remember to remove ta'al marbuta, أربعون. خمسة remove التاء المربوطة plus واو نون خمسون ستة becomes ستون سبعة سبعون ثمانية ثمانون notice for ثمانية in addition to التاء المربوطة الياء also the ياء you're removing the ياء plus التاء المربوطة so both letters not just one letter and then you add Wawnoon. So, thamaniya is a bit different. It becomes thamanoon. Tis'a, tis'oon. A hundred is mi'a. One more time. Ashara, ashroon, thalathoon, arba'oon, khamsoon, sittoon, sab'oon, thamanoon, tis'oon, mi'a. Can you help me guess the missing numbers? So we know عشرة, عشرون, ثلاثون. What about forty? What is it? أربعون, ممتاز. And then we've got خمسون. What about sixty, seventy, and eighty? ستون, سبعون. ثمانون وتسعون ومئة ممتاز And now asking how much is something or what's the price of something بكم How much is something بكم So كم means how much or how many We add the B uh, particle to it So بكم Followed by the noun. And we're going to have some examples. Qamis is a shirt. If we want to ask how much is the shirt, Bikam il qamis. Bikam il qamis. So literally, B is like for and Kam how much. So as if you're asking for how much. Bikam il qamis. And the reply, Al-Qamisu bi, the shirt is for, followed by the price. Over here, bi doesn't mean by, as we've said earlier, like I travel by bus. Usafiru bil hafila, for example. It's different here, it means it's for. So it's a different meaning in this uh, example. Al-Qamisu bi, the shirt is for, followed by the price. And we have different examples here for the price. بكم القميص؟ القميص ب بثلاثين دولارا for thirty dollars. القميص بخمسين دولارا. القميص بستين دولارا. Notice here that ثلاثون خمسون ستون change to 
يا سو ثلاثين instead of اون إين خمسين ستين the reason is B is a particle of جر حرف جر so it's gonna change the grammatical case of the number noun after it so ثلاثون becomes ثلاثين in the genitive case and خمسون becomes خمسين and ستون becomes ستين after B so بكامل القميص القميص بثلاثين دولارا القميص بخمسين دولارا القميص بستين دولارا now هذه ثلاثون دولارا this is thirty dollars like have thirty dollars أو هذه خمسون دولارا this is fifty dollars you're giving him the money هذه ستون دولارا this is sixty dollars so because the number noun here is in the nominative uh, case it's gonna preserve the wow noon but only in the accusative and genitive case it's gonna have a ya and noon and now can you please provide the price of the shirt so if i ask you bikamil qamis and you can see it's priced for 20 dollars you're gonna say al qamis bi al qamis bi 20 dollars al qamis bi 20 dollars so the shirt is for 20 dollars bikam al qamis 60 dollars al qamis bi 60 dollars al qamis bi 60 dollars بكم القميص القميص باربعين دولارا القميص باربعين دولارا بكم القميص القميص بسبعين دولارا القميص بسبعين دولارا بكم القميص القميص بثلاثين دولارا القميص بثلاثين دولارا بكم القميص القميص بخمسين دولارا القميص بخمسين دولارا بكم القميص القميص بتسعين دولارا القميص بتسعين دولارا بكم القميص القميص بثمانين دولارا القميص بثمانين دولارا well done احسنتم well done so far now we're gonna learn how to count combined numbers that is like 22 32, um, 54, etc. Let's say we've got 22. In Arabic, we're going to start counting from right to left the same way that we write Arabic. So we're going to start by the ones and then we're going to count the tens. So we're going to start with two. So we're going to say ithnan for two. And then we're going to say ashroon, which is the 20. We're going to imagine that we have and separating the two numbers, which is wa in Arabic. So we're going to say two and twenty. Ithnan wa ashroon. Ithnan wa ashroon. That is twenty two. Similarly, thirty three. We're going to start with the ones, that is three, and then the tens, which is thirty. ثلاثة وثلاثون ثلاثة وثلاثون Similarly, أربعة وأربعون خمسة وخمسون ستة وستون سبعة وسبعون ثمانية وثمانون تسعة وتسعون 
Remember that the two numbers will always have wow or and in between them and that you're going to start with the ones first and then with the tens. And of course, mi'a is a hundred. And now, can you please find the missing numbers and read them? So we've got 22, 22, and we've got 33. What would that be? 33. أحسنتم. 44. 55. 66. What's 77? سبعة وسبعون ثمانية وثمانون What's ninety-nine? تسعة وتسعون ومئة أحسنتم ممتاز Now we're going to put our numbers into practice as well our shopping skills in Arabic so let's say you walk into a shop, Majar, and um, the shopkeeper or the seller, Al Ba'ir, says, Tafaddal. If you're a male, he's going to say, Tafaddal. If you're a female, he's going to say, Tafaddali. Please come in. Ayya khidma. Can I help? Can I be of any service? Khidma is basically a service. Tafaddal, tafaddali, like, please come in. It's a very polite word in Arabic. You also say it when you're giving something, like, please have or please take. Or if you're opening the door to let someone in, etc. Uridu, I want. So, uridu is when you want something. Uridu al ma'taf, for example, the coat. Uridu al ma'taf. أريد المعطف لو سمحت if you're addressing male أريد المعطف لو سمحت if you're addressing a female if the seller is a female تفضل أو تفضلي so they're gonna tell you تفضل أو تفضلي هذا هو المعطف now notice المعطف is a masculine noun in Arabic every noun is either masculine or feminine so we're going to say, here is the coat. هذا هو المعطف. We cannot say هذه هي because المعطف is a masculine noun. Now let's say you chose the skirt, التنورة. Notice التنورة has التاء المربوطة at the end. The round تاء, which is a sign of femininity, a strong sign of femininity. So the seller would then say, هذه هي التنورة. He's not going to say هذا هو, he's going to say هذه هي التنورة because it's a feminine noun. So we're going to use the feminine demonstrative and the feminine pronoun. هذه هي. Now let's say you want to ask how much so we know that it's become. بكم المعطف أو بكم التنورة. How much is the coat for or how much is the skirt for? المعطف ب so the code is four, and now you're gonna have to read the number for me. Al ma'atafu bi wahedin wa arba'ina dolaran. Al ma'atafu bi wahedin wa arba'ina dolaran. Remember, we're gonna read from right to left. We're gonna read the ones first, which is wahed, and we're gonna imagine there's a imaginary wow or and between. The two numbers, so واحد وأربعين. واحد وأربعين دولارا. Why did we say أربعين and not أربعون? Because we have the preposition be before that. So remember, we're going to use the uh, genitive form, which is أربعين and not أربعون. بواحد وأربعين دولارا. Now the seller is going to also ask um, which one do you want? Is it, for example, the blue one or the long one, the short one? Ayya ma'tafin turid. Which coat do you want? Or ayya ma'tafin turidin if you're a female. And you can say, uridu al-ma'tafa al-azraq. For example, the blue one. 
أريد المعطف الأزرق لو سمحت لو سمحت if he's a male لو سمحت if she's a female المطلوب no, he or she gonna say المطلوب the wanted amount or what I want from you المطلوب واحد وأربعون دولارا so I want from you forty one dollars now we use the nominative uh, form so we say أربعون we don't say أربعين because there's no preposition before that تفضل أو تفضلي please have واحدا وأربعين دولارا please have forty one dollars here it's in the accusative case so we use أربعين because it's the object of the verb please have تفضل أو تفضلي واحدا وأربعين دولارا and you can use the same template to ask about any of the other stuff such as القميص السروال الحذاء النظارة etc and now that we've learned all about numbers and how to count we're going to learn how to tell the time because we need those numbers to tell the time but first let's cover some basic vocabulary sa sa is an hour side note it could also mean a watch or a clock in arabic daqiqa is a minute thaniya is a second in the plural form saat daqaiq wa thawanin originally thawani but it changes to thawanin in the nominative case with tanween kam sa'atan fil yawm how many hours are there in the day notice after kam reminder it's a singular noun we don't say kam sa'at kam sa'atan we use the singular form or a singular noun after kam now we know there's 24 hours in the day so let's say that in arabic fil yawmi in the day fil yawmi arba'un wa ashruna sa'a so there's 24 hours sa'a is a feminine noun so we say arba and not arba because remember from 3 to 10 we've got gender disagreement so arba'un wa ashruna sa'a Remember, we start with the ones first, so we're going to start with four, and then we're going to say and twenty. Arba'un wa ashruna sa'a. Kam daqiqatan fi sa'a? How many minutes are there in the hour? Again, kam daqiqatan, we're going to use the singular form after kam. And we know there's sixty minutes in an hour. Fi sa'ati, in the hour or in one hour في الساعة ستون دقيقة so 60 minutes كم ثانية في الدقيقة how many seconds are there in the minute again we use a singular noun after كم في الدقيقة ستون ثانية so in the minute there are 60 seconds also notice that we say في اليوم 24 ساعة ساعة. We don't say hours. في الساعة ستون دقيقة. We don't say دقائق. في الدقيقة ستون ثانية. That is second. We don't use the plural form again. Why is that? Remember we said the numbers from 11 to 100, the counted noun is going to be singular. So it's literally you're saying in the day there's 24 hours and not hours. In the hour, there's 60 minutes and not minutes, the literal translation. In the minute, there's 60 seconds and not second, because from 11 to 100, the counted noun is going to be singular. So remember that one. Point number two, which we need to tell the time, is the quarter, third and half. So, rub is quarter, 
ربع ثلث is a third ثلث نصف is a half نصف ربع ثلث نصف And so, ساعه is an hour. A quarter of an hour in Arabic is referred to as ربع ساعة and a third of an hour is referred to as ثلث ساعة and half an hour is referred to as نصف ساعة. Now let's look at an example from a textbook. هل لديك موعد مع الطبيب؟ نعم موعدي الساعة العاشرة موعدي الساعة العاشرة أيضا الساعة الآن التاسعة والنصف الباقي نصف ساعة هل لديك That means have you got We can also say هل عندك so هل لديك أو هل عندك Addressing a male, if we're addressing a female, هل لديك أو هل عندك موعد an appointment مع with مع الطبيب. So have you got an appointment with the doctor? نعم موعدي my appointment موعدي. So the yeah is the uh, possessive pronoun here. الساعة العاشرة at ten is at ten o'clock. موعدي الساعة العاشرة أيضا as well. So my appointment is at 10 o'clock as well. أيضا. الساعة الآن the time now التاسعة ونص. So it's 9 and the half. That is 9.30. So literally saying and the half in Arabic. That's how we express half past. التاسعة ونص. الباقي so the remaining or the remainder what's left الباقي نصف ساعة if you're paying at a shop you can also use that term الباقي for example عشرون دولارا so the remaining is twenty dollars so الباقي means the remainder So, to tell the time in Arabic, as we've noticed in the text earlier, we always start with the hour first, followed by the minutes, and we use wow in between. For example, 2 or 5, الساعة الثانية, so we start with the hour first, الساعة الثانية, using ordinal numbers, then we're going to use wow as a replacement for the two dots. So, wa khamsu daqaiq and five minutes. So, literally translating to it's two o'clock and five minutes. As-sa'atu thaniyatu wa khamsu daqaiq. So, number one, we start with the hour first and we use ordinal numbers. Number two, we're going to use wow. Number three, we're going to state the number of minutes. Just a minor note, we use دقائق here and not دقيقة. Just remember if you're counting from 3 to 10, the counted noun is going to be plural and if you're counting from 11 to 100, the counted noun is going to be singular. And now let's speak about when it's to time that is when we want to say it's something to for example 155 that is it's five minutes to two so you can say it's a sad thaniya to illa khamsa daqaiq so we start with the hour first a sad thaniya to and then we say illa which means minus or two and then we mention the minutes, خمس دقائق, five minutes. So five to two, that would be الثانية إلا خمس دقائق. And notice that we use دقائق because from three to ten, the counted noun 
would be in the plural. And now it's time to test your knowledge and practice. So we've got this clock face and it shows 9.30 or half past nine. How are we going to read this clock? Remember in Arabic, we're going to start with the hour first. So, as-sa'atu, at sa'atu and then we're going to use wow and so as-sa'atu, at-sa'atu, wa, is it going to be a rub a thulth or a nisf Of course, it's going to be and the half, literally translating. So it's going to be a sa'atu, a ta'sa'atu, one nisf. A sa'atu, ta'sa'atu, one nisf. What about quarter past one or one fifteen? How are you going to read that in Arabic? So first of all, we start with the hour. الساعة الواحدة We say الواحدة Remember, and not الأولى When we're using the ordinal numbers for the time in Arabic So we say الواحدة الساعة الواحدة Is it going to be والربع والثلث أو والنصف Of course, it's going to be والربع Because ربع is a quarter So it literally translates to It's one o'clock and quarter and the quarter. الساعة الواحدة والربع. What about this clock? How are you going to say it's 20 minutes past 3 in Arabic? Remember, we always start with the hour first in Arabic and not the minutes. So we're going to say الساعة الثالثة والثلث. Because it's the third, so it's 20 minutes. الساعة الثالثة والثلث. And of course, we can substitute والربع والثلث والنصف by just stating the number of minutes. For example, here, 920 or 9 and the third. We can say الساعة التاسعة والثلث. Or we can say الساعة التاسعة وعشرون دقيقة. Also here, الساعة الواحدة والربع can be substituted by الساعة الواحدة وخمسة عشرة دقيقة. Same meaning, just a different way of expressing the time. One more example, الساعة الثالثة والثلث can be substituted by الساعة الثالثة وعشرون دقيقة. Let's review one more time. So we always start with the hour followed by the minutes. For example, over here 205 becomes الساعة الثانية وخمس دقائق Literally translating to it's 2 o'clock and 5 minutes And now to say it's 5 minutes to 2 We say الساعة الثانية إلا خمس دقائق So we start with the hour first We use إلا and then we mention the minutes And remember, you can use another version, which is you can say it's one and fifty-five minutes, for example. So, الساعة الواحدة وخمس وخمسون دقيقة. So it's just another way of telling the time. So it's one fifty-five instead of saying it's five to two. And now that we've got a general idea about telling the time in Arabic, we need to go into detail about the two time, that is when it's something to the hour. For example, 8.55, that would be 5 minutes to 9, that translates to التاسعة إلا خمسة دقائق. So 9 minus 5 minutes, literally speaking. 
So we start with the hour first at Tasia, then we use illa, which means minus, and then we mention the minutes, khams daqaiq, five minutes. Now 8.50, that is 10 minutes to nine, it would be at tasiatu illa ashra daqaiq. So nine minus 10 minutes, literally speaking. 8.45, that would be at tasiatu illa ruba. And 8.40, that would be at tasiatu illa thulth. Let's practice a bit. Can you please tell me what time is it now? الساعة التاسعة إلا الربع أو إلا الثلث الساعة التاسعة إلا الربع So minus the quarter And over here كم الساعة؟ الساعة الرابعة إلا الربع أو إلا الثلث الساعة الرابعة إلا الثلث So minus the third And the last example What's the time here? الساعة الثالثة إلا الربع أو إلا الثلث الساعة الثالثة إلا الربع أحسنتم Well done and just a final practice with 5 2 and 10 2. So over here it's 5 2 6. Remember in Arabic we start with the hour first. So as sa'atu as sadisatu illa khamsa daqaiq. So it's 6 o'clock minus 5 minutes. And 10 to 5. We're going to start with the hour first. الساعة الخامسة We're going to use illa and we're going to state the number of minutes. الساعة الخامسة إلا عشر دقائق And finally we get to the last point which is we have a very special way in Arabic of expressing 25 past and 35 past. So let's say we've got 9.25 and 9.35. So 9.25 is expressed as it is 9 and a half minus 5 minutes. الساعة التاسعة والنصف إلا خمس دقائق. And 9.35 is expressed as 9 and a half plus or and 5 minutes. الساعة التاسعة والنصف وخمس دقائق Sounds a bit confusing but this is the way we express 25 past and 35 past in Arabic so it takes a bit of getting used to it Alternatively if it's too confusing you can just use the minutes format and say الساعة التاسعة وخمس وعشرون دقيقة الساعة التاسعة وخمس Thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to get notified of any new videos. Again, find me on Facebook. If you haven't already, just search for Learning Arabic with Angela. Visit the blog www.learningarabicwithangela.com to get free, unlimited downloads and resources in Arabic learning. Thank you and until we meet again in the next video.